Okay, but the most welcome. Your name and your profession and your question. Check. Check. Hello, Dr. Zakir Naik. My name is Ali. I am a last year student in this university majoring international relations. Um, I was born in a Muslim family, as you can say, a Wahhabi, a very strict Muslim family. And two of my friends have shown me a video of yours, how to deal with an atheist, which I did watch. Um, and some of my friends as well has converted to Islam because of you. And, um, and that's make me think you are the most... Sir, brother, are you a Muslim or are you a non-Muslim? I am actually not sure where am I between an atheist or as a believer. Okay, fine, you can continue your question. And it makes me think that you are the most rational and easy to understand kind of scholar that come across to my life. Uh, so my question is just like two sides of a coin. The first side of a coin is um, still regarding about the law of a Muslim people to vote for a non-Muslim people. Um, you said in the previous lecture, you, you have mentioned that we cannot vote for a non-Muslim um, leader because they actually reject our God or your or Muslim's God or Allah. And then what uh, my question is, what happens to the Muslim people who actually live in a foreign countries that do not have any Muslim candidates in their place? And the other side of the coin is this. Um, I do completely understand what the reasons why God put the bad people in the, in, in the hell. I watched the video of yours, but I still do not understand why God still punishing them in the world just like Rajam. If you are robbing something, maybe your hands cut off. If you are having, side, uh, having sex out of marriage, maybe your penis cut off. And if I can put the question to this manner, how can God be so sadistic? that he knows in the end he will be putting them in the, in the hell, but before putting them in the hell, he is torturing them in the world. Thank you. The brother asked two questions. Brother, I understood your second part of the question. Your first part of the question, you said, I said that you should support a Muslim in preference to a non-Muslim. And after that, what you said, I didn't get the question. The first part of the question. Oh, the first part, of, uh, it was, what happens to the Muslim brothers? or Muslim sisters who happen to live in a foreign country um, that do not have any Muslim candidates in the elections. Very good. The brother asked two questions. Before posing the question, he said that he's born in a Muslim family but doesn't know whether he's a Muslim or in between an atheist. He's seen my video cassette and he thinks that I'm the most logical and rational speaker. Allah alam. Allah knows the best. And he asked two questions. Number one, the first question is that I said that if you have a choice between a Muslim and a non-Muslim based on the verse of the Quran, you have to choose a Muslim. What will happen to those Muslims living in non-Muslim countries where both the candidates are non-Muslim? That's a very good question. All the verses in the Quran that Allah speaks about choosing whether it be Surah Maida chapter 5 verse 51, whether Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 28 or Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 144, all the places that says that Lord let not the believers take the unbelievers in preference to a believer, in preference to a believer, as the awliya, as the friend, as the protector, as the supporters. That means whenever there's a choice between a Muslim and non-Muslim for being a supporter, a protector, you have to choose a Muslim, without doubt. There's no option for that. And I've given the answer in detail in my other talks and questionnaire session. But a basic question is, what happens if a Muslim is living in a non-Muslim country? And both the leaders are non-Muslim. Who do you choose? You choose, if both are non-Muslim, you choose a Muslim that is following more of the Quran and Sunnah between the two. So between the two, you choose the lesser evil. If both are non-Muslim, you will have to try and find out which non-Muslim you select will be following closer, if not everything, closer to Quran and Sunnah. Similarly, if both are Muslims, who do you choose? If both are Muslims standing for election, you choose a Muslim which is closer to Quran Sunnah. You don't choose a Muslim who will be rich, who will give you more money, he will give you housing. You choose a Muslim that is closer to Quran and Sunnah. 
the teachings of the glorious Quran and the Sahih Hadith. In both the cases, whether both are Muslims or both are non-Muslims, if both are non-Muslims, you choose the lesser of the evil. If both are Muslims, you choose the person who is better and closer to Quran and Sunnah. Hope that answers the first question. Um, is, it, is it actually forbidden to vote for a non-Muslim? No way does the Quran say it is forbidden. But if there is a choice, if the two people standing are Muslim and non-Muslim, without doubt, 100% should be Muslim. Because Allah says, Allah is very clear cut in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 51. That let the believers not take the Jew or the Christian as the awliya. The Arabic word awliya means friend, protector or helper. Because they are protectors unto themselves. And anyone who does that becomes one of them. So if you choose a Christian or a Jew, Allah says, you will become a Christian or a Jew. And this is not the strongest verse. Surah Maida normally is not quoted by me in lectures. The stronger verse is the other verses. Surah Maida is yet a, a less stronger verse. The stronger verse is our Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 28, which says that let the believers not take for all ya, the same word, friends or protectors or helpers, an unbeliever rather than a believer. An unbeliever rather than a believer. If anyone does this, you will not receive the help of Allah. Except by way of guidance. Here Allah is very clear cut that it is not talking about election in this verse. Please don't get the Quranic verse wrong. It is talking generally for protection, but leaders are included. It is not exclusively talking about leaders. It includes leaders. It is generally talking about where you are talking about ultimate protection, your, as your main protector, as your main helper. Then, if there is a choice between a Muslim and non-Muslim, you have to choose a non-Muslim. If you don't, Allah will not help you. Now, if you see the analogy in this verse of the Quran, and the same message is repeated in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 144, Ya ayyuh amanu, O you believe, take not for awliya, friends, helpers or protectors, unbelievers, mushriks, in preference to believers, anyone who does, does wrong. Now here, there was a question posed to me in Bandung, a lady again, born in a Muslim family but deviated. She was telling me that, you know, but the Christian candidate is very good, he is better than the Muslim candidate, so why shouldn't we choose a Christian candidate? So I said there can be three cases. Can be that the Muslim is better than the Christian. Second case, can be both are equal. Third case, can be Muslim is better than Christian. In case number one, if according to your thinking, the Muslim is better than the Christian, so you don't require the verse of the Quran also. You have to vote for the Muslim. If both are equal, the Quran is clear cut that you have to vote for the Muslim. In the third case, if the Christian may be hypothetically, it's ten times better than the Muslim. I'm not saying that. I, I have not met both these candidates taking part in the governor's election, Jakarta. But hypothetically, even if you agree that the Christian, according to you, is ten times better than the Muslim. And I asked the sister yesterday, how is he better? No, because he's removing poverty. Okay, fine. You may think, if you vote the Christian, you may get a million rupees more every month. Maybe. Maybe you'll get a good house. But here you have to realize, and there is a person who asked me, isn't it illogical that the person, if the Christian is better, yet you vote for the Muslim? I gave him an analogy. And I asked the brother, that suppose you have employees working for you. And I'm asking you, brother, if you have employees working for you, one employee, 
you are paying 10 million rupees a month. How much? How much are you paying? Sorry, say that again. If you have many employees, one employee you are paying 10 million rupees a month. How much? 10 million rupees. Yeah. Every month you are paying him, correct? Yes. Now, that employee, you tell him, come to the office at 10 o'clock or maybe 8 o'clock and stay till about 6 o'clock. He doesn't come to office. He is going and helping others. With that 10 million rupees a month, 1 million he gives in charity to others. But doesn't listen to you. Doesn't come to office. You say, go and buy this thing. He doesn't buy. But outside, he is helping other people. He doesn't come to office. Full month he comes only once or two days. Will you be happy with him? Brother, will you be happy with him? I almost cannot hear your voice clearly. Can you please repeat? Oh, you cannot hear because I think the sound system is not going on top. I said that if you have an employee who you are paying 10 million rupees a month, he does not come to office. He comes only twice a day, does not listen to what you say. But from the 10 million he receives every month, he gives 1 million rupees in charity to many poor people. He does not come to office. You are his boss. He does not listen to you. He doesn't follow your commandment. Will you be happy at the end of the month? No. Why? He is doing good work. He is giving one million people to the poor people. Will you give him bonus? Will you give him bonus? Yes. Will you give him bonus? Under, under certain circumstances, yes. I am asking that if he comes to office only two days in the full month, does not listen to you, does not follow your advice, no. but... Yeah, no. Will you be happy? No. Will you give him a raise? Okay, next month I will make from 10 million to 11 million. Will you say that? No. Why? He's doing good work. Because you are his boss. You are, you are giving him 10 million. He's not listening to you. But from that 1 million, he's doing charity outside. Similarly, a person who's a non-Muslim doesn't thank the top boss, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who gives you the wealth, the health, the full body. Who has given you? Allah has given. He is your creator. The creator who has given you this body, who has given you health, who has given you wealth, he has also told, help others. But he is not worshipping him. He is not worshipping Allah, he is worshipping somebody else. He is working in your company and he is helping the boss of the other company. What will you do? You know you have a competitor in your company, another company. Your employee taking 10 million from you is going and helping your competitor and doesn't come to work with you. What will you do? Uh. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our biggest boss. He is the creator of the full universe. Imagine he has given me life, I go and worship somebody else. Shirk. Biggest sin. He is giving me the money. With that money, if I help 10% of that money, poor people. The biggest injustice is, he is not thanking his own creator. <coughs> that sin cannot, comp cannot be compensated by doing small good deeds like giving charity. You have another employee with you. Huh? You are paying him 10 million rupees. He is coming dedicatedly, follows all your advice but does not give charity outside. He is taking full 10 million rupees. You tell, every employee of mine should listen to me, follow my advice and should also give charity outside. He is following everything of yours but not giving charity outside. Will you find him better or the person who takes 10 million does not come to office and goes and helps your competitor? Who will you like? The first one. First. First one? Which one? The Those who come who comes to your office every day or that that doesn't come to the office? The first one. Who the comes one to the office every day. Correct. Who comes to the office but may not give charity. You tell in your speech, earn from me, listen to me. In ending you also say give charity. He listens to you 99% but does not give charity. Yet, he will be a better employee. Similarly, you have to understand as a human being, 
as the Muslim that our creator, our main boss is Allah. And Allah says, if you support such a person who does shirk, Allah will never support you. So even for me, if I come to know hypothetically that the Christian is hundred times better in worldly things than the Muslim, but that Muslim has Iman, he believes in Allah, even if I lose every month 10 million rupees, 1 billion rupees because I vote him, yet I will vote for him. You know why? That 1 billion is very small. Even if the non-Muslim gives me 1 billion rupees a month, if Allah does not support me, what's the use? If Allah does not support me, what's the use? And the guidance you get in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises four greatest women in the world. One of them is Bibi Asya, the wife of the Prophet, uh, uh, wife of Moses, uh, wife of Pharaoh, sorry. Asya, who was the wife of Pharaoh, the richest man in the world, the most powerful man in the world, who called himself God, knows Billah. He was a Tagut. What does she do? Imagine she's the wife of the most powerful woman in the world, most powerful man in the world. That means she's the richest woman, most powerful woman in the world, right or wrong? What does she do? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Tahreem, chapter number 66, verse number 11, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb, I would like to exchange my position, what I have in this world, I would like to exchange for a house in Jannah, close to Allah. She's a businesswoman. She wants to sacrifice all her wealth, all her position, all her power for a house in Jannah. So the house in Jannah, brother, is more important than the palace in the dunya. Because the palace in this dunya is limited. Success in this world is not the money you earn in this world. It is not the fame you earn in this world. It is not the popularity you have in this world. It is not the degree that you get in this world. It is not the wealth you own in the world, not the good car that you have. Success is Iman. Only if you have Iman, will you be successful and go to Jannah. So for the Muslim, for the moment, the worldly things are not success. Our success is the Akhirah. So there is no two doubt at all. Any Muslim who has the basic knowledge of the Quran, in no way can support a mushrik in competition to a Muslim. The Quran is very clear cut. A person who doesn't have knowledge of the Quran and if he supports in ignorance, then may Allah forgive him. But since you have heard me now, you cannot say that you are ignorant. I have given you a tafsir of the Quran. Not one verse, three. Even Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 80 talks the same thing. There are many verses. So brother, if you know the logic of why has Allah said that. That means by voting a Mormon, a Muslim, you are supporting Allah. Khalas. Even if that Muslim causes a loss to me, I am doing it for Allah alone. Khalas. Even if that Muslim is my enemy, if I know if he comes to power, he will put me behind bars, yet I will vote for him. Why? I want Allah with me. Even in jail, Allah will be with me. Correct? So this is the verse of the Quran. There is no two doubt about it. Come into your second question.